Institute signed a five-year memorandum of understanding to increase more collaborative efforts for the sustainable intensification and management of rice fish production systems. For the benefit of our online audiences, we've set up this live discussion for us to share more about this collaboration and how it satisfies our goals for a food, nutrition, and water secure future. Joining me today are EMI's Director General, Matthew Morrill, Gareth Johnstone, Director General for World Fish, and Mark Smith, EMI's Deputy Director General for Research and Development. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. To jumpstart today's discussion, I'll read out some questions that we fielded from our social media channels, and each of you can go around answering it. Um, what are we, Erie, World Fish, and EMI trying to collectively address in this MOU? Okay, so, all right, I'll, I'll have the first go. Uh, look, we understand that uh, the problems uh, meeting development goals and also uh, addressing future sustainability needs come uh, very much not through single technologies, but through the intersection uh, around systems. So in Southeast Asia and South Asia uh, in particular, uh, rice, water, and fish come together as a, an integral part of farmers' livelihoods, but also of managing uh, the environmental impacts. So what we're looking for here is a way in which the science and the technologies that we do separately can come together collectively to answer higher level questions uh, around uh, the future of the system and how we can deliver even more benefit in the future. I would um, just add, there's many synergies within the rice field, rice fish fishery system, um, synergies in terms of um, nutrition and, and nitrogen in the soil, the uh, pests of control, and so the synergies reflected in the, um, the field itself and in the, in, the, in the rice fish system can also be reflected within our respective centres, knowing more about these systems, understanding how they operate, uh, applying the systems approach, so looking at how, you know, as foods uh, can be produced sustainably from landscapes that, that take on and, and you convert to these, uh, these approaches. And it's not a new technology, it's been around for thousands of years, but in the collaboration that, that we seek is to, to learn more how it can work in a modern, modern system, modern world. I think, um, you know, the, uh, we're in a time where, the, where societies and the planet faces ex really extraordinary challenges around uh, meeting goals for food and nutrition security, meeting goals for um, water security, for reducing the environmental footprint of agriculture, for, for, for making sure that we're resilient to climate change. So, so in that sense, I think it's really incumbent on organizations like ours with the complementarities that we have between, between um, uh, rice and fish and, and, and water resources to, to come together and, and, and use our combined capabilities and our combined networks and our combined partnerships to um, to deliver those systems yeah. level yeah. systems level uh, solutions thank you so a lot of um you already addressed the second question but if there's anything to add how does this agreement benefit satisfy each of our organizations or st our stakeholders and our goals maybe i can start yeah. um, sure. y you know i i i think that um, the CGIR and, and our centers, what are we here for? We're here to deliver, um, to deliver uh, uh, science and, and then impacts from science um, at, at scale that, that change and, and that change the systems that, that we were just talking about. And, um, and so speaking from the point of view of, of IMI, uh, where our focus is water resources, um, if we're going to have that kind of systems level impacts at large scale with the speed required uh, to, to address the challenges that, 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 that the world's facing right now, then um, uh, our, we will benefit as a, as a center, as an institute from, from leveraging the skills and networks that that our um, that our partners bring into this into this agreement. Yeah, okay. yeah I was just saying that this is um, 
this is not something that's just come about today. Uh, we have been working together for several years and in fact um, in places like Myanmar, Cambodia, Bangladesh, our organisation has been working together uh, informally as well as in, in projects. And uh, in Myanmar, for example, where there is a growing interest and need for kind of integrated farming systems, combining you know, the importance of uh, um, uh, protein, carbohydrates, utilizing the resources more effectively um, you know this has been a really interesting uh, way of which we're collaborating coming and, and that's sort of formulated over a number of years into this into this partnership so I'm, I'm really pleased that we managed to, to take that that step today to formalize that that really helps us then focus on specific outcomes using science for evidence for policy development uh, and really helping national governments as well as I hope global globally uh, how these systems can be incorporated into into the normal production systems within different countries, not just in Asia, but also in other other regions of the world. So I would uh, start from the perspective of our, our clients, uh, our beneficiaries. They really, uh, they're not looking for us to come along with one piece of the answer. They want the answer. They want the total answer. And by combining the skills here of these three centres, we think that we can address in a much more comprehensive way challenges that our partners have uh, around meeting those global food security environmental footprint questions. Uh, to come to IRI, uh, you know, our strategy is all about transforming lives and delivering benefits for the planet through rice-based agri-food systems. There's no systems without fish or water, so we need to come together uh, across those three elements uh, as an integral part of, of where we see that we can add our particular scientific expertise, but we don't have hydrologists, we don't have fish sure. geneticists, right? So th it's crazy to develop that. We should always work to augment what we do through these kind of partnerships. And finally, at the risk of stating the obvious, do you think it is high time for CG centers to boost research collaboration efforts by in households? Thank you. Well, well so I, yeah, yeah go. I mean, I, I think we there is a lot of collaboration anyway. There's a lot of work that's going on between different centres, and it's sort of also determined regionally, geographically, where there's a need. I mean, there's no 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 uh, misunderstanding here. Sri, Sri Lanka is where the headquarters of IMI is. We're okay. here in in uh, in Philippines uh, with IRI, and we're based in Mal Malaysia. The uh, mega deltas of Asia. These are the areas where rice and fish combine. Uh, beneficiaries, clients will require solutions to these and, and so the CG is coming together with other partners. It's, it's yeah. not just the centres, it's with other partners, with businesses, with government, with NGOs to actually solve some of these collective solutions and finding also ways to scale out in, in a much more sort of effective and efficient way. But certainly doing the science, connecting it with, uh, with the policy and connecting it with the private sector and this is where our skills come and other centres are doing this. It's just that we felt that this was the right moment to come together and say, okay, let's sign a, an agreement that really commits us and also demonstrates and promotes these systems as well as promoting the importance of collaboration within, within the CG system uh, and centre-to-centre -centre collaborations. Well, uh, just to um, comment that the problems that face us, uh, as were mentioned earlier, in relation to climate change and in relation to future sustainability of, of production and so on are, are much bigger than any one organization, any one country. Uh, so we need to pool our resources <coughs> and work to understand, uh, for example, the trade-offs between various technologies. So there might be something that we want to do in rice that the fish guys say, no, well, you know, that might uh, negatively impact our, our fish farms or it may not be the best answer from a hydrological point of view. So we need to bring our thinking together so that we can come up with not just the first best solution, which might be what we think, but the ultimate best solution. And to do that, we need to bring uh, our collective talents together. Yeah, I think we, we shouldn't underestimate what y your point, Gareth, that there's a lot of collaboration that mm. occurs already um, between each of our institutes. and. Um, and, and so the, the part of the opportunity here is to, is to make sure that happens consistently, but also programmatically, um, so that we can take on the, the, the challenges of 
of understanding and addressing trade-offs and helping, as you say, our clients, our partners to, to navigate those trade-offs in these systems, um, which, is, which is fundamental to, to solutions and to, to, um, to, to really delivering the kind of change that, that, we're, that we're looking, looking toward. Thank you, Matthew, Gareth, and Mark, for sharing Yuri, Worldfish, and Amy's perspectives on a truly timely and important topic and partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.